One of my personal missions is to take the overwhelm out of marketing. And my guest today is going to help you do just that. We cover everything from hot launch strategies that are working right now to habits and mindset for new business owners to where to put your attention in every stage of your business when it comes to your marketing to make sure that you're being as successful as you can be. You're not leaving any opportunities on the table. And of course, I had to ask him about his experience scaling multiple businesses beyond seven figures. My guest today is Chris Michael Harris. He's a partner at Kim & Co. and a founder of Startup U. Having founded, bootstrapped, and scaled multiple startups beyond seven figures in his mid to late 20s in both the on and offline space, Chris excels in taking concepts from idea stage to traction and growth in extremely rapid succession. In addition to being involved with several exciting endeavors, ranging a variety of industries and serving as the entrepreneur in residence for Silicon Valley-based Accelerator Program, Founder Institute, Chris is also the host of the Startup You podcast, a podcast that has trended as high as top five worldwide on iTunes, on their business, health, and education. The show has featured many mainstream guests such as Damon John, Barbara Corcoran, Marie Forleo, Grant Cardone, just to name a few. In addition to over 40 New York Times bestselling authors and thought leaders in their respective space. Chris is passionate about service to others and creating empowering content to uplift his audience to take control of their own futures as business owners. To learn more about him and his company, visit their site, KimberlyAndJimenez.com. And as always, go to this episode's show notes to find all the links mentioned during our conversation, including direct links to get in touch with Chris. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Creator to Leader. Are you struggling to connect with your ideal customers online? Are you confused about the most effective way to market your business? If you are ready to become the go-to expert in your industry and stand out from the crowd, this podcast is for you. Hey, I'm Eugenia. That's Eugenia in Spanish, but you can call me E. My mission is to help entrepreneurs stand out online so that they can grow their businesses. I do this through comprehensive marketing strategies, impactful content plans, and storytelling leadership. We both know you're running on caffeine and big dreams. So let's dive right in. Chris, welcome. I am so excited to have you here. Something I said at the beginning of this podcast is that I was not going to have guests that I had not previously vetted, and I felt like they were going to bring tangible value because... People have too many things to do to waste just hearing about the same things over and over. And I yeah. promise you that you have not heard what he's going to say today. So welcome to Creator to Leader, Chris. Man, the pressure is on. You just put me right in the hot seat. Well, and if the pressure is not enough, in one of my previous episodes, I am not big into people focusing on SEO content. And mm -hmm. I just have one caveat. If you want to do searchable content, you need to go to the business lounge. Only with them, I'll give you permission. Okay. Do not watch a YouTube video. Do not Google it. Do not, because it is done wrong 90% of the times, except with you guys who are only the 10% who do it right. And that right. has been, I think, the success of your business journey. Yeah, it's been the success of everything we've done is building first off of long form searchable content with literally every business, whether it's online or offline. It has been the foundation of everything we've done from a marketing standpoint, for sure. And to give an idea... First of all, you're a marketing genius, but you are a business trailblazer, really. You have jumped from different industries and you have been successful and we'll talk about that. But I want to first congratulate you on your recent launch. It was very impressive. I was kind of analyzing the funnel because I, I've been learning from you passively. So I feel like as a student, being able to see how it looks yeah. like in your own launch was fascinating. And what's the results you feel proud of that you want to share today? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much. Um, there's always this like added, it's it's just a weird thing, right? Like we have people that buy from us that are also learning from us while we like do the thing to sell them on the, you know, it's such a weird dynamic, but I'm glad that you're tuning in and, and following those things because there's so much you can learn and there's so much that we borrow from our mentors as well. So I think it's such an important thing that you're doing. So thank you for the praise and I'm glad that it was well-received and, and hopefully you can adopt some of it. Um, so as far as what we did, that's what you wanted to know, how we did it or what we achieved? What is a, a result? Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, we, we live in the era of 85, seven figure 
launch. Yeah. And I don't need a, a figure, but just something that you are really proud of in this season of your career with this launch. Oh, man, that's really, there's so many things. Um, I think the first thing is, is that we really proved a model in the messaging that we've been trying to nail in the membership for a long time. So for those that don't know, memberships are, are really hard to sell. People kind of view it as another bill, right? Like they would Netflix or other bills. So it's usually one of the first things on the chopping block. It's like, oh, I'm having used this in two months. I'm going to cut this and then I'll come back at a later date and so on and so forth. We had grown the membership to thousands of people in, in the past, but via trials. So what I'm most proud about is one, let me just say this. Our team was fantastic. Like top to bottom, the, our virtual assistants, uh, both Kim and Brian, our entire core team, the amount of work that we did in that launch and how fast we did it and how seamlessly it went, in my opinion, was a 100% a testament to the team. So that's what I'm most proud of is how well they did their jobs and how they went above and beyond so that Kim and I could truly just step into what we do best, which is to, to teach business owners how to do their marketing successfully. Um, we had never sold, like I said, this successfully outside of just the trial model, which was amazing. Um, and we tried something new, which was I'm seeing this happen in the market now more. Instead of inviting people to a free class or a free challenge, you actually charge a nominal fee for it. So we charge $10 for people to attend this three-day workshop. So basically, you're they're getting value, but they're paying you to be there. So there's a level of commitment financially. And that is such a game-changing concept because effectively you're getting paid to show up and teach them while also getting the opportunity to sell them. And you're qualifying those leads because they've paid to be there even a little bit. Our conversion rate was, I would say, probably almost 10 times what we've seen with free launches. Usually you'll see like three to 5% conversions on like a free webinar or something like that. And we converted almost 30% of those paid attendees for the workshop to new TBL members. So that was a huge, huge, huge win. We learned so much from it. But it was awesome to see this model kind of come together and for us to execute on a plan. And, and that was super exciting for us. Was it hard for you to, in terms of conversion to your list, when you send the workshop being paid, was it a hard sell for them? Do you see a lower conversion from the paid, from the free list to the paid product? It's a great question. Um, so there's not a side by side comparison, meaning like we didn't launch a free version like where we promote it for two and a half weeks but i will say this i do have side by side comparison when it comes to the stick rate we retained over 95 percent of people that showed up that paid to be there when we did a free webinar post people that you know so if you didn't sign up for the three-day workshop we did a, a, a webinar that was free that was effectively the same content just truncated the sticky rate was like less than 50 percent so in terms of quantity of people, that's I can't calculate that because we didn't put the same effort into promoting it, but the stickiness was preposterously high. And we some of the sessions, I don't know if you were there for all of them, we went like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. And I'm saying like, if, if 70 people showed up live, we ended with like 65 of them still there. I mean, it was unbelievable. And I think that's a testament to the nominal investment they made, which is something for people to think about because we become so enamored with free that I think sometimes even spending $10, it's amazing what people will be willing to commit just because they are invested. They do have skin in the game, right? I think also taking them off of Facebook, I, I like I like the idea of a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live. I love those ideas, but it's too tempting to be like, eh, back to scrolling, right? And like back to your typical Facebook or Instagram experience. When you pull them off of that and get them on Zoom in combination with them paying to be there, it just creates this different environment of like, I'm invested. And so those are the two side-by-sides that I can give you that really, really justified the $10 experience. We'll probably raise that price in the future to like 27 to 49 to be there. But man, it's such an awesome way. Even with smaller numbers, we convert it so much higher. So like, let's say we've got 500 people to show up free versus like 300 that paid. The, the conversion rate would have far exceeded what it would have been, right? Side-by-side -side comparison. So I don't think we'll ever do a free thing like that again mm -hmm. in this format, just because of how crazy those numbers really were. I don't want to get too technical, but there's something to be said about your method of working because, you know, I don't know where you are in your journey, not you, Chris, but ever as someone listening, you can fill out an event like this with ads. Yeah. And then you just create a, not a fictitious audience, but you just basically retarget and look alike audience and you fill it out with thousands of people. Yeah. But the quality of those people is not the same as the quality of people that have been nurtured. And by the time they show up, 
they know that they're getting value. So they are not just their window shopping. So I think that just speaks to your method. It's basically proving why you teach what you teach. Because if you had paid thousands of dollars on ads to build yeah. all these audiences, we, then probably you would have had a 50% drop off rate or more. Yeah, no, for sure. And we did run ads to build. We, I think we added about 5,000 new email subscribers leading up to the event itself because I knew we were going to try to like really hard promote this. We made back our every dollar we spent in ads just off of the workshop registration fee that we charged. Then they had workbooks and other things they could add. So we we're actually profitable on our ad spend just from charging for the workshop. So to your point about ads, you can absolutely recoup and self-liquidate. Plus, I think we made about a third of the money back on ads right out of the gates because post post download of the lead magnet that we ran an ad to, they were introduced to like a smaller ticket offer. So we already made a third back plus the additional money that we made from the workshop registration. So again, I don't want to get too much in the weeds. I don't know where your audience is at as far as like technical stuff, but it just gives people an idea of what's possible out there, specifically in this particular model, coaches, experts, stuff like that. There's so many opportunities to monetize. And when you're talking about economy of scale and you've got a hundred people paying you 10 bucks, it starts to add up, right? It's like, I'm getting paid a grand just to show up and talk for 30 minutes or an hour or what have you. And you can build from there. So a lot of opportunities and really qualifying, like I said, with some kind of dollar amount really seems to go a long way. Well, I don't want to get too technical. I do think that regardless of where you are in your journey, you need to get used to these words. You need to be comfortable, even if you say, I'm not in a place to build my list through ads. And I, I and you were the first one to tell me this actually is that ads is gasoline to an already existing fire. You have a lead magnet that works. You have an offer that has been validated and then you put ads to it to grow it. But if someone doesn't really know what to look for, it's like, I mean, to be very basic, it's like when you're in your early 20s, you don't know who you're dating and you just go out with the first person who tells you you're pretty and then you build this knowledge and then you get you know, better quality of people. So this happens with business. So I love that you are bringing this technicality, quote unquote, because it is simple and you, you guys are not highly technical people. So you don't have to be, but you need to understand and be comfortable with with the terms, I believe. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. It's really important because there are a lot of bro marketers out there that just will, will sell you on, Hey, we're going to, you know, get you all these leads and stuff. And like you said, we have just not found that that's a, a predictable model to just run ads as something that's unproven worth organic. So that's always the metaphor I get. I'm glad that resonated with you, by the way, because I was like, oh, that's so good when I came up with it. But like, it's literally you build your campfire with organic, you prove an offer, you scale it out. It's like gasoline to the fire with ads. And that's always been like I'm getting on that lead magnet to build, you know, to kind of get some new influx of leads into the email list. I was getting 96 percent conversions on the lead magnet like that's like preposterously high. Like the average landing page converts at 2.35%. This converted at 96 plus percent. So our cost per lead was less than like 89 cents per lead. I mean, that's in 2023, that is fantastic lead cost. So, but it was proven, right? We've proven that offer over and over and over again. So it's a building process. But once you, the excitement is, is like, if that's not where your audience is at right now, plant a seed in your mind and be like, wow, I could get 5,000 leads in less than three weeks and get less than a dollar leads and then monetize it immediately after. That just shows you how fast you can scale and how far you can scale when you really kind of figure out what to do with all of this. And I think that's A, that's what's so important about the work you do because you don't work in a vacuum. And there's nothing wrong with being a specialist, like an email marketing specialist, because there are times when you just need help with something specifically. Heck, I am very specific to what I offer, but I think if you are building your business, you need to have this understanding. And I know most podcasts start with, oh, tell me your whole life story. <laughs> but I I do want, because when you guys talk, you, you need to stop and listen, right? So I wanted people to really understand that know what you're talking about. And maybe they're wondering, oh, probably his first business was selling shakes on Instagram. Uh-huh. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And you had a business in local business. I, w- I don't know if you would cal- qualify it as brick and mortar and you transition yeah. into online. So you've been around and I would love to hear about that shortly about that transition, the first business you had, local business to then online and why you feel qualified to then say, Listen to me. This is this is what's up. Yeah, I um I started a moving company with my brother from our college apartment. 
we saw these girls moving a pull out sofa down the hallway. And I was like, this is crazy. This hallway is like 10 and a half miles long. <laughs> I mean, it was horrible. We were in a downtown area. And so it was hard to navigate. So we helped them. And then we we're like, let's go give a flyer to the lease office manager because people might pay us for this. And I think we ended up moving about a third of the building <laughs> within like the next 45 days. We made like 10 grand in like 45 days or something ridiculous uh, just in that one building. So uh, fast forward, I'll skip a lot of parts here, but basically I took that on as a full-time venture. Uh, and within 36 months, we were a multi seven figure business. So we were working with furniture manufacturers. We were doing full installs for like student housing apartments that weren't unfurnished, that were furnished. We would do all the installation work. We did those in over 32 states. And I worked with five of the seven major turnkey furniture manufacturers. I think I was like 26 at that point. So it was like way over my head. I had no idea what I was doing, but it was all spawned from getting those opportunities first with that one apartment, as I mentioned. But really what ignited that fire of growth was content marketing. It was, we were doing stuff on social media. Kim specifically was helping with social media and nobody was doing. I went crazy with blogging. I mean, I was blogging like a madman. I was blogging like three times a week, really hyper-local, hyper-specific. Website starts taking off. We're building our local uh, ranks, it, it, ranking in terms of getting a lot of reviews on Google. Um, and it just exploded. And so, in fact, in 2014, I turned away $2 million in business. I just couldn't take on because we were so buried. Like I drove the distance from New York to LA and halfway back equivalents in 10 days, just trying to cover all the locations around the map where we had something going on where I needed to be there for some reason. Like a guy was having trouble with a project or so-and-so this, I mean, I got stories for days, like we won't get into it, but <laughs> crazy stuff. So when we decided to move on from that business, because it's just, it was exhausting. And for a variety of reasons, right. I just, I didn't expect that to happen. I, I was a college kid, right. I didn't expect that to happen and really just started to, to realize that like we can really help a lot of business owners with marketing. So making that transition was, was a difficult one, but I think to a large degree, we brought a different approach into the marketing space. And what I mean by that is, is that we had run a quote unquote real business, right? And so I think being able to communicate with people in that capacity, understanding where they're at, there was a certain seriousness that we brought into the space where I feel like a lot of people looked, I always joke and say people in the online space, it's like a pajama job, you know, like they kind of fall into it and it's like, Hey, I get to work from home and like do my thing. And it's like, it's awesome. But like, like I was like in my, I, at first when I started doing it, I had to like dress up like I was going to an office because I just couldn't get into the mindset of like business, you know? And then now I've got all kind of like Batman stuff behind me and all this and that. So like I've, I've leaned into it, but at first, like I really had to like bring my seriousness to the online space. And I think there was some degree I do that still. And it's intimidating for people. And they're like, bro, this guy's way too much intensity, like way too much intensity. And it's just because I operate in that space, right? Like I was working with hundred million dollar companies and, you know, doing these massive deals and communicating with China and going through us customs. I mean, it was just crazy stuff. Right. And so like, it's been a little bit of a transition, but what was the core of your question as far as what that transition entailed? Well, the transition, but I do want to highlight something that it's, you took yourself seriously. And now yeah. we might, we might laugh about it. And sure. On the other side, you have Batman and probably you're wearing pajamas. That's fine. But at the beginning, you took yourself seriously. Yeah. And I think there is something to be said about when you're starting your business, you are the person who thinks the highest about yourself yeah. while the market catches up. So yeah. imagine if you would have gone visit clients with ripped jeans and flip flops, sure. you are not taking yourself seriously. So For sure. we go before we go in the transition, I think there's something to be said about so many people feeling awkward, showing up as experts online, giving their opinions, being thought leaders, or even showing up dressed up, right? Because they've always been more of a relaxed person. And there's something to be said of, are you, is that your style or are you just not taking yourself seriously and you're just doing this little project? For a hundred percent, for sure. And if you don't take yourself seriously and you're not approaching it seriously, it's a hobby and you're not going to have that killer mindset to go after and actually monetize your thing. And we see people all the time that it's like, yeah, I've been working on my business for three years. And it's like, well, have you generated revenue? No, I'm still, still pre-revenue. It's like, that's not a business then. Like, I love you, but it's not, it's a hobby. And so it's so important that you monetize. And I think you start that process by taking yourself seriously and actually treating it like a business for sure. And you're not a big mindset person. And, you know, I don't want to get too in the weeds in mindset, but you're not really a, a mindset coach. I mm -hmm. think you just have these practices where you are just like, I decided that this is the business. I decided that this is what I'm building. 
and this is it. You know, this is it. I have too many things to think about to start, you know, manifesting with my crystals every morning. I I just don't have time for that. Yeah, sure. Um, Yeah. And we could go down that rabbit hole if you want to. But yeah, I, I, uh, it's become about more of the mechanics. It's, it's what our audience wants, right? But we're actually learning that more people do need the mindset stuff. So I think you'll see a little bit of a shift in that. I agree. I think mindset is very hard in the beginning, but I think some people oversell the mindset and they 100%. just tell you, have to believe in yourself and do a quantic leap. I don't even know what that means, but yeah. I have heard the quantum leap and there is something of mindset, but if you don't have a good offer, you are just not going to sell it. So there's, so what my, my original question was, now you have this moving company, you are yeah. used to going every day to quote unquote work, you have yeah. physically to move your body to all these locations. And now you have an online business, you are teaching startups, you're teaching marketing, because you have different online businesses at this point. How was that pivot both in your understanding of yourself? Because, yeah. you know, once you're getting outside of your house, I am a business person. Now I'm, I'm in my room. I'm in my office all day and I'm yeah. running multiple seven figures. How was that? Yeah. Like you said, the mindset, what, you know, the mindset part was really, really tough for me at first. I always say Kim, Kim could, my wife could work under a bridge. No problem. Like I have to be like really focused and dialed in and stuff like that. In terms of the transition, the hardest part for me, and this should give a lot of hope to people that are business owners that don't feel like they have the marketing bug. I absolutely did not have the marketing bug. Marketing felt so artsy fartsy, for lack of a better term. It felt like this creative outlet. And I just felt like I didn't necessarily have that too much. And I think that may be my pragmatism coming through. But really, I think was the big breakthrough for me was kind of turning the marketing into a science versus an art. And I think learning that that's really at the core what it is, right? It's like psychology of what moves people to take action, learning from the really like the David Ogilvy's of the world as an old school direct response marketer. Learning from those guys really helped expand my mind. But for those that are kind of like, I don't like, I don't get marketing. Like I'm doing this stuff and it's not working. I'm with you hundred percent. That's exactly how I was. And it took me years. In fact, I didn't show up in the business lounge as much as I probably could or should have, which is, you know, the business that my wife Kim started uh, because I didn't feel like I was qualified to give the advice that I felt like people needed. And it really was like kind of me saying, I'm not going to operate out of integrity. I'm not going to give people advice if I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. So I spent an insane amount of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally working with the best, finding mentors that could help me kind of acquire these skills. Um, So that was a huge transition for me. In addition to the mindset part of, you know, my ecosystem being, you know, in an office and doing all those things, dressing up, suit and tie type thing to meeting corporate offices and settings to like doing this. That was one part of it. But the skills and the acquisition to be able to help business owners in a way that I knew we could was a massive transition for me that was really, really tough. It seriously took me about three years. It's weird. Kim says this, and this is super important. She says, clarity doesn't strike, it unfolds. And there was just a season, and I can't tell you when, Eugenia, but there was like a season where I was like learning all these isolated things. You know, like I like, okay, this is what a webinar does. This is how it would, this is ads. And like, these are, they were all saying they're independent silos, right? And like, I kind of conceptually understood those things. And then one season, all of a sudden it just started to like click. Like my neurons just started to like connect all these things. And then it just, there was fluidity to my thought process around marketing and it all kind of came together. But I don't think that there was like a light bulb moment. I don't think that that happens with marketing. I think that you just, you're involved and engaged so much that all of a sudden you're saying things, you're like, I didn't know that I like knew that. Or you make some connection and it's like, oh, that's amazing. Um, so, so I think for many people, we just don't stick with things long enough for it to become second nature and for our minds to give itself time to process and conceptualize and make all these little interconnections with between things. Right. And so we see people all the time, students, um, I'll give a shout out to Elisa, one of our, our TBLC students, one of our coaching students, like made a massive breakthrough recently. And I can see, I'm like, it's happening with you. You're making those neural connections now where before it was just things that you were learning. And now it's like, ah, like I get it. Like it it makes sense. It's fluid. It's natural for me. Um, So that was, I wouldn't cite one specific thing. It was a combination of things, but it was just immersion. It was immersion, engaging and staying persistent. And that's really led to that unraveling of that clarity coming to me. Wow. I love that. Immersion brings clarity. Commitment brings clarity. Taking yourself seriously. And for people 
I you have a success path. I don't know if this is trademark, but I think it is genius and it is a whole program. So I, I don't expect for you to go over it in a couple of minutes yeah. that we have left. But I feel like that would be a very interesting way of ending this conversation with kind of laying the land for people that are so for them to identify where they are in the journey what mm -hmm. they have ahead and maybe to see if they're focusing in the wrong thing because that happened to me when I first met you guys. So can you kind of go over what it looks like? Yeah, sure. Um, and if we had visuals, we could we could show that as well. Um, basically, what we've identified and what we've seen work in every single business is the ability to take people off platform, off of the web and successfully and predictably convert them into becoming customers, right? A lot of people have trouble with that gap. So what happens is, is they're putting a lot of content out on whatever medium they're choosing, right? If they're listening to podcasts or they're putting out podcast content like you are, they're really engaged with Instagram. There's that like weirdness of, okay, they're great and they're engaging with my stuff, but they're not becoming customers. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to entice them to do that. And then sometimes I'll like talk about my product and nobody does anything. So then the next time you do that, you're like, oh my God, no one's going to dig it. It starts to become a thing in your head. And you're like, well, I wish I got paid for my content because I don't, but I'm also not turning people, right? And so then we follow influencers and we're playing their game and like we're dancing and pointing. And it's just like, but that's not what works for business owners. And that's not, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like I think have fun on social media. I think I don't have enough fun on social media and I think I should, but there's a predictable path that we've determined that leads people to become enticed to take action, whether that's sending them direct to an asset, like, like the, the three-day workshop that we just hosted. It's like, you saw this, you joined our email list and you wanted to attend this thing to learn about something particular for your business that benefits you. I always say this, it's like giving an appetizer at the food court. If you're a lesser known brand and you're competing with the Nikes or the big brands of the world, the Coca-Colas, or, or let's say you're in the food court, right? Chick-fil-A, uh, Pizza Hut, right? Whatever. People are going to, by default, go to the brands that they already know and trust. That, that's just how our brains work, right? Because we haven't, as small businesses, established enough of those touch points. So what do those smaller businesses do in the food court? They're hustling, man. They're out there giving samplers and appetizers like, hey, try this, try this, try this, to try to entice you to try them instead of the options that you're already familiar with or the things you've already been doing. It's pattern disrupt, right? So in an online space, there's an equivalence to that. It's how do we get people to take action on something that entices them, something that triggers their brain to say, ooh, I need that. That's a problem that I have, or that's a thing I'm trying to accomplish, or that's something that I want. Let me explore this further. And that takes them off platform and pushes them down towards your medium, which is your website, your email list, or, or whatever. Then there's a whole nother conversation about how you communicate your offer or communicate what it is that you sell to them, but at least you've moved them down that pathway in whatever medium you're doing, right? It doesn't matter. You could be doing all this simultaneously on multiple platforms. We try to recommend to people like pick one to start and do that really, really well, whether that's Instagram or whether that's YouTube, whether that's Google, uh, meaning your blog, right? So in everything we've done, the reason I say that everything we've done has been long form searchable content is people found our blog. Let's use a moving company as an example, looking up resources for moving in Athens, Georgia, right? It was a moving company. Well, I'm giving you like the top 10 mistakes that people make that cause damage in their move, right? So they're looking up these resources. They stumble across that blog. They're like, oh, this is really good information. Establishing authority, letting people know you know what you're talking about. On that blog, they will be like, hey, get a quote. Or here's a resource for you, like your moving checklist. Download that. So those are things that create that transition. And we call it content to customers. It's literally taking them from content and predictably transition them into leads, prospects, and customers. So how we help you build that, build that structure and system is through what you're talking about, which is our marketing success path. So going from the launch and validate stage or validate and launch rather, validate your content first, make sure you have a message that resonates with your audience, make sure you know how to speak to those people in a meaningful way, knowing who they are, knowing what they care about, communicating how you're different, which is a nice way of saying better, by the way, uh, then launching those efforts, staying consistent, developing a content system that has you posting on a regular basis, not posting and ghosting or posting and praying is what we call it. So a lot of people post and then they got to figure out a, a clever way to come back in and apologize. Hey guys, sorry, of uh, the last couple of weeks, my kid was sick and blah, 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 blah. And so I'm back now. And like, you know, they're not consistent with their posting on Instagram or whatever it is they're doing. And they're having to come up with constant reasons about how they reinsert themselves in that conversation. 
So once we've done that, then it's about building those assets like a lead magnet, like a landing page on your website, like a sales page, whatever, so that we have places to send them. So we're curating content that pushes them towards the sale, solving problems for them or answering questions for them that make them enticed to take steps forward. We need to have those things because if somebody wants to do business with you, you better have a place to sell them, right? It's like if you had a restaurant, you have no way to take credit cards. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Like there's no way if you could actually transact with these people. So this entire system is basically built upon the premise of taking them through that process from validate stage to launch stage, to grow, to profit or to breakthrough and then to profit stage all the way seamlessly. And one of the things, and I'll, this is the last thing I'll conclude with because I'm getting a little long-winded on this, people get distracted easily. And we've never lived in a time where we're more distracted. We see people doing this, so we try that. We see people doing this, so where we get distracted. Oh, new thing, I'm gonna do this, or a new trend, or a new algorithm, or new music that I'm supposed to play with my video, right? So all those things are distractions. So this is a step-by-step -step way that we've proven for business owners to follow that has been proven uh, thousands of times probably at this point with all the people that have gone through to some degree of success, whether they went crazy and got multi seven figure success or whether they weren't that committed, but they did a little bit and they got marginal success. It is, it will get you success. It's up to you as far as how successful you make it. And that's the cool thing about it is this is a proven system, not a hack or a gimmick or a bro strategy that we've seen so many people do. I wanted to talk also about SEO content that works, but I think you paint the picture and made such a clear case that I think people are going to be ready to make sure that they understand how it looks like. You do have some resources from what I remember yeah. that are some paid resources some free resources. What's the next step that someone who, who listened to this, they are totally on board and they want to start taking action. Where can we send them? Yeah. So I think the, the best place to start is you've got to make sure as a business owner that you're not getting bogged down. The average business owner now spends seven hours a day on social media or creating content for the social media. That is outrageous. Uh, so it's getting that content, getting out of content overwhelm, but also staying consistent with a content plan. Picking your platform, staying consistent. If you're not developing those touch points, it's really, really hard. You've got to build relationship. And I think most people on the bro marketer side of things, they focus on all these ninja strategies and hacks stuff like that. But honestly, building relationship with people, and you can probably speak to this, Eugenia, there are people literally that show up to the things that we host and they're like, I don't know, I brought, I brought my credit card. Whatever you're selling, I'm gonna buy it. And it has nothing to do with the pitch. It has nothing to do, and I'm not saying those things aren't important because they are. You can optimize till you're blue in the face, but if you haven't built relationship, it doesn't matter. It's gonna fall on deaf ears, right? So when you show up and you're putting out content and like you're doing right now, or putting out a blog and staying consistent and emailing your list, posting on social media, the more you build that relationship, the more people are inclined to overlook and give you a little bit of grace if your sales pages aren't perfect or if you don't have the perfect amount of email follow-ups, whatever the case may be. So all that to say, our content calendar template download, it's 100% free, is the place to start because what it effectively allows you to do is start developing a content plan. It's not, oh, I feel like posting today. It's no, this is the plan and this is what I'm gonna post, when I'm gonna post it, I'm gonna batch my content, I'm gonna schedule it ahead of time so that I can just let it be and not have to sit here and, think about it all day long and be like, oh, I got to post, you know, did I, I'm posting since three days. You know, it's making sure you stay on that schedule, stay on that plan so that you do have those touch points, so that you don't feel overwhelmed. It's that you're taking, in some cases, we've seen people get their content down to three weeks or three, I'm sorry, three hours per week rather than seven hours per day. Massive improvement that's going to help people substantially improve the time it takes to do their content creation. So anyways, I'll give you the link for that. Um, it is Kimberly and Jimenez.com slash content calendar template. I think we have a content calendar template specific link. I can give you that as well. But forward slash content calendar template is the, the direct link. Perfect. And I'm going to leave that below. And I want to highlight something before we leave that you said it's about connections and relationships as much as their strategy and as much as there is a clear goal for revenue, you have, and I just clicked things, you have in the background a sign that says humble hustle. Mm -hmm. And we can hustle and we can work hard, but we need to stay humble and we need to understand, or the best way to stay humble is to understand that this is a service we are doing to make sure that we are helping other people. So I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for standing in integrity because that is not common in the industry. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. And thank you for having me on. And by the way, before I go, I just want to say uh, to your audience, guys, I, it takes literally 15 seconds if you could go for Eugenia, whatever pod, wherever you get your podcast, whatever app you're on, do two things. 
for Eugenia because you don't know the amount of work it takes to actually like set all this stuff up and do the interview and stuff like that. So, so this is like leaving a tip for your waiter or your waitress. Subscribe to the show and then leave her a review because what it does is it tells the algorithm, this is a show, Eugenia's show has has been trending lately, top top 100, right? Top 65 or something? Top, top 40, we made top it to 40. top 40. Top 40, that's great. So that was huge for my podcast. When my podcast launched, we were top 10 in business, health, and education, and it was all built on people subscribing and leaving me reviews. Those are the two main factors above all else. I know listen time and stuff like that also plays into it, but if you can help her out, literally by just taking 15 seconds to do that, subscribe and leave a review. Even if you just say five stars, great chat, loved it, that's it. You don't have to say anything, you just hit five stars. That will really help her show. So I would greatly appreciate if you would do that for her. Well, thank you so much. And Chris, I'm leaving all your links below. And I know that people will go running to ask you things. So apologize in advance. Yeah, all good. I know I gave you guys the nerdy stuff. Trust me, it's not all nerd talk. There's some, if you feel like that was too nerdy for you, don't worry, there's, there's some less nerdy stuff that we also talk about as well. Yeah, they have signs that say live, love, love for you to there mix you it go. up. There you Thank go. you, Chris. Take care. All right. Thanks so much. I hope you love this episode. If you connected with the podcast in some way, please rate it and review it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That is the number one way you can support the show. And because sharing is caring, share it with a fellow entrepreneur wanting to become a leader, not just a creator. I am so grateful for you. I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me a DM over to at eugenia.wu. That's at E-U-G-E-N-I-A dot W-O-O. And if you only send me a microphone emoji, I will know that you stay till the end. Thank you for listening. See you soon.